Hey, what's up, everybody? It's your girl, Lex in a Box, and I'm here at Cosign Loft with nobody, none other than Val from Val's Cheesecakes. How you doing? Watch out. Listen, <laughs> I'm, I'm excited to be here, and Lex, and you do your thing, and I'm just glad to be in your presence. Yay! I'm glad for you to be in my presence. <laughs> Watch I'm glad out. to be in your presence. <laughs> I'm, I'm just glad that we are here, okay? Yes, okay, so on this <laughs> Sunday morning. This is church, okay? Oh, I think this is church on. with cheesecake. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> We're going to get into that a little bit okay. later, but you know I'm ready. Yes, you are. You are always ready. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I ran into Val, um, what, a couple weeks ago? Yeah, a couple weeks ago you came to the shop. Yes, yes, and this is how we end up linking. So I saw him. You was back there whipping it. Listen, these days, <laughs> as a business owner, you have to make the cheesecake, sell the cheesecake, and dance for the cheesecake. Do you hear me? Okay. okay. Yes, I had to come in there and give me a smooth order, okay? I got the classic, and I got the peach cobbler, and let me tell you, delicious. We're going to try some a little bit later, but let's get into your story behind Ooh, Val's Cheesecakes. Oh, my goodness. I'm so excited. So, tell me, what year did this begin? So, I started in 2012. Uh, so I took care of my mom through terminal breast cancer and every single Sunday my mom and I bake one cheesecake. So from 2008 to 2012 we baked like over 200 cheesecakes. So I got a box of recipes that got a lot of cheesecake in it. Yeah. So in 2012, I went down to the county and I said, I'm excited and not knowing how to run a business, how to start a business, I just went to the county first, December 31st, 2012, and put Val, Val Cheesecake as a formal business name. So registered that. 2012, I absolutely love that. Tell me, where were y'all getting these recipes from? I mean. Peach cobbler, red velvet. Um, where were these coming from? So, so my mom. So I'm born and raised in Haiti. So my yes. mom immigrated to New York in 1966. So I'm no spring chicken now. Okay, <laughs> all right. So she immigrated in 1966 to New York, and she worked at an all Jewish bakery. And she was the only Haitian girl working, the only wow. black girl working in there. Wow. And she learned how to make some cheesecakes. And I never asked my mom where the recipe comes from. You know, it's just. It's Marie's Cheesecake because you don't ask a Haitian woman <laughs> where your recipe comes from. Got it. <laughs> she'll slap you till next Tuesday. So. Got it, got it. Now, I love that. Now, every Sunday, y'all would bake a different cheesecake. And while your mom was going through this sickness, I mean, what does it mean to carry her legacy? Oh, my God. Like, like listen, it's, it's a story. I think every single cheesecake you see is about her. Every single thing, there's a specific item that in every cheesecake that is about her. So it's kind of like I felt that my mom never fully actualized herself mm -hmm. as a woman, mm -hmm. as a professional person. She, 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 she ran a mean business in Haiti sell, uh, selling photography supplies, yeah. but she never fully actualized herself and fully came into her own. So I feel like this business is about making her fully actualized, having a business plan, having everything in place, being registered everywhere, having accountant, having lawyers. Yes. So this is not just about the good cheesecake and the looks, but it's also there's the back end side of it, which I want to make sure that she is represented legally, yes. you know, um, LLC formation, the proper formation and having multiple, L you know, so I, let, let me stop. I, look, I'm like, hold on. Wait a minute. We need to take okay, a meeting I after know. this interview. Hold on. <laughs> this is getting real serious. Now, you're talking about the business side and the behind the scenes and you used to be an engineer. So talk about a little bit about how that helped you in your business side for Val's Cheesecakes. So first of all, the most important thing, I never hated engineering. You know how a lot of people you read these time magazine stories that a lawyer quit quit his job to go open a PB yes. in sandwich shop. <laughs> You know, that's that's not me. I cause cause they hated their job. I'm I'm a big nerd. I love concrete design. I love roadway design. I like bridges, drainage structures, boring stuff, right? So I always like what I did and starting to work in two thousand well, I graduated in two thousand and from two thousand up until two thousand twelve, I had amassed a nice four one K account. <laughs> okay. I bet so, you did. So, yeah, I did. <laughs> so savings and so on. And then in 2012, I started to get into the business, but I didn't quit engineering until 2017. Whoa. But I had started the shack on Maple in 2015. So hold on. Stop right there. Because a lot of people, I feel like 
my generation and below me um, feel like, you know, having a nine to five can is like, oh, I don't want to work for anyone. Or I think that, you know, I need to choose the entrepreneur route. But talk about how your nine to five actually helped you in that way. Well, I think that you should always use your nine to five. You should always use whatever resources, whatever skill you got, whatever degree you got, you should get it to, you should use it to get your other passions rolling. So I had a story to tell about my mom and I know I had a nice 401k account. I know I had a degree. I know I could work at any time. So I use that, I use that 401k. Now there's a 20% that Uncle, um, you know that Uncle come, Sam gets, come get it. but um, <laughs> I got back my 20%, my 10% back when I cashed that account out. So nice. that got me Greenville location and I'm gonna knock on wood in <laughs> that engineering is still working in my life. Even today, it's wow. still working in my life to support these bread pudding and these lemon cheesecake and yes. stuff like that. Oh, wow. I think that is amazing because so many people knock the nine to five and don't use it to their full advantage, right? Because okay. it's a stepping stone. Yeah, it doesn't have to lock you down like you think that it's just going to not make you realize yourself. Use every single minute of your day job. Yes. Now, mind you, you can't sit at Chase Bank and just like, okay, I named Chase, but you, you can't. <laughs> you can't you sit can't, at the bank. You can't sit at your job <laughs> and just be doing your business plan all day and be taking orders for your business. You can't, that's not right. That, that is of not course. Right. But you can use strategically the money you get from there, you can use the skill, the connections you have from there to build your business. And that's exactly what I did. Yes. The engineering community in town mm -hmm. still orders. A lot of these firms are ordering cheesecakes from Val. Really? Because I know that because I've worked with them. Wow. You know, so so that's a benefit to the business. So use the skills, use the connections you got. So you talk about connections and, you know, delivering cheesecakes to law firms and where you previously worked. So talk about a little bit um, about how relationships and not burning bridges are very, very important. Okay. <laughs> listen, <laughs> listen. You know that's important. I never leave a job. All the jobs I've had in my life, all the connections I've had, or all the 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 places I've been in business with, you you know, I've never burnt that bridge because I know later in my steps in my future undertakings that they will be beneficial not just to them but for you as well. So uh, mind you, there are some bridges you can burn, you know. So I closed a location last summer. It was in the newspaper about what happened at that location. We're going to get into that. So we, uh, I don't know if we need to. Okay. <laughs> but it was, it got ugly. And, you know, the Dallas Observer printed the whole article and what happened in that, that bridge is burnt. So I don't think we're ever going to go back there because it was so ethically wrong what happened. But I think once, the minute something touches you know, on your ethics, mm -hmm. you know, I think yeah. that's where you can, call it that the bridge is burnt for real. But most of the times I make sure that I don't burn those bridges because I know one day they might need a cheesecake. They might need, a firm might need 500 jars of cheesecake, y'all. I know, that's and right. And I'm going to testify to not burning these bridges. Yes, okay. absolutely. Now, I'm, I'm backtracking a little bit. So you say you opened your first um, storefront in 2015. Yes. Okay, you used the money for your 401k. We got this building up and running. Now, which location was this again? So that was the location on Maple. So that was the first little location we had. It was a little shack on Maple Avenue, Blue and that was a great a great location so we opened that in 2015 mm -hmm. <clears throat> but last year we closed that location in 2021 last November so that was got the it. first one got it and then now you reside on uh, <laughs> in lower Greenville yes, yes yes um and that is just booming so that's the second location. So that's the second location. So we've had, you know, like like we've had locations open and close. And it's not because of just just that just because I just want to close a location. So we opened a location in Fort Worth. Mm -hmm. And then when COVID showed up, COVID closed the whole food hall. Got it. And we're like for six months, we're like, what are we going to do? Right. You know, so we had to close that. Got it. Uh, Maple, that was just after six years of being in Maple, 
we didn't have space. It's a 250 square foot space. That's all it was. That's it was small. just one room yeah. that had a kitchen, that had refrigeration. And mind you, it worked. We use every 250 <laughs> square foot. <laughs> I know that's right. But it was time. I couldn't, we, we couldn't grow the right way. Mm -hmm. So that's why growth requires you to fold in something. It's like a season that is changing, leaves are falling. And kind of, you, ha kind of, you kind of have to let some leaves fall right. so you can grow in other ways. So that's Ooh, exactly what happened. Let's talk about that growth now, because I'm sure it took a lot of growth to open your first storefront, you know, going from an engineer into becoming an entrepreneur. Talk about your battle with m mental health and oh how, how you view that and how important that is to you. So I think I think last I think COVID did a lot of things, and I'm not one of these business owners. And mind you, COVID respectfully had a lot of impacts. So, yes. but I'm not one of these uh, people who will put everything on COVID. I had issues before COVID. Correct. My business had <laughs> issues before COVID. We all did. <laughs> COVID just <laughs> exacerbated or exposed some of these issues. And one of the biggest issue that I had was not coming to full terms with the grief of losing my mom. So I think my mom passed in August of 2012. December, three months later, or really a month, I'm working on a plan. Wow. And three months later, I put a business together. Two months later, I'm selling my first cheesecake at um, um, Odd Fellows and Bishop Arts. Mm -hmm. And it's just, I just kept myself busy and yes. busy opening one location, opening a second location, opening a third location, food hall and stuff like that. So I never got a chance to sit and realize what it means, why am I doing doing this, and what does it mean, what was the, the story of my mom and accepting the grief on that. And my mom, I had to take my mom off of life support. So, and, and my mom gave me no directives. There was no like, listen, this is what you do when I'm on life support. I had to make that decision. And that's a decision I lived with for several years. Right. And I think last year it came. Are you an only child? No, I'm, I am, I am, I am, I am the last of four. But you know, I wrote the book, my family wrote the book on dysfunctionality, okay? <laughs> okay, <laughs> so I am, I am the one, the last one who took care of my mom. And I just think that I just never dealt with the grief of that in the last year that hit me hard. So yeah, that is yeah. what happened. Got it. Now, did you seek therapy? How did you heal from this? I, I, I did. I did. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> so I got a lot of help from, uh, I had a, I, I guess, a psychotherapist. I got a psychologist. I got, I had three people. Three mm -hmm. people. And then a coach, a business coach. I had four people to help me out, sought to to solve these issues but the biggest the biggest thing that came to help me mm -hmm. this year actually is reaching out because depression one of the biggest thing that depression does yeah. is make you not w even want to talk not even want to reach out mm -hmm. not even want to do certain things and some of my followers reach out and then said val i don't see you dancing anymore because the mm. dancing is like a big thing, okay? Yes. <laughs> okay, oh. it is part of the cheesecake. You yeah. know, I can't do a week without a dance for some reason. Yes. <laughs> so they they saw that they and they said, I'm it. not dancing. So people started to reach out on the DMs mm -hmm. and I started to reach out to people and combating that loneliness that the depression does. Cause that has been my biggest help. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. I love that, I love that. and. I say don't be ashamed to get therapy, you know? I think that it can be very helpful. I've been in therapy, but I'm like, look, <laughs> I love what you had. Like, I'm, I'm like, I need a team like you had to get me just on together real well, quick. Well, I needed, I needed to look I at every that. facet, you know, just, just, just the psychotherapy, yeah. the medical part. Yeah, I even looked into yoga. I even looked at acupuncture and stuff like that. Yeah. So I reached out to every single folk I, I had to, mm -hmm. but the biggest, again, help was reaching out to friends and telling friends, listen, I am depressed. Mm -hmm. I am not going to call as much, but I'm reaching out to you today just so you know that I am depressed, that I'm going through a lot. And, you know, let's talk about friendships, because I think that in friendships, communication is very important. Yes. Um, on the way to the top, did you lose friendships because you sent that message or after you, you know, after your success, have you lost any friendships and what has that meant from you? What, 
meant, meant to you? What have you learned from it? I think I the business owner life makes you because you have to run your shop and you have to constantly be on the grind. And I think being on the grind doesn't let you properly maintain some relationships. You know, mm. and, and, and for the past seven years, I haven't properly maintained the relationships I need to. So okay. I would say I haven't had, bec because I'm getting to the top of the cheesecake world in Dallas, <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> that I've lost some connections, but it's been because, <coughs> because I'm knee deep in cheesecake, I'm making the batter myself. I don't even have time. But you know something, if you wanna have time, uh -huh. you you are going to find time. You gotta make time, right? Hello. You gotta yes. make time. That's, yes. what I tr <laughs> that's what I honestly and truthfully believe. Yes. So did you find yourself having those conversations with friends, uncomfortable conversations like, oh, you know, I don't have time today, but maybe we can work it out, I don't know, another day or, <laughs> you know, or. I just kind of want to know how, how you dealt with it if you did. So because of the depression, because of the, because I, I, I'm a big introvert. So people, okay. people think I'm a, like, I'm Extroverted, dancing and I'm yeah. like, <clears throat> I prefer to be home mm -hmm. and just be on the couch with a bowl of popcorn and on Netflix all day. That is what I love <laughs> to do. But um, that is not the case. But because of the depression, I had to reach out to some friends and tell them the truth of what was going mm -hmm. on. Mm -hmm. And telling them the truth about what's going on also requires you to tell the truth about the interaction between the two people, mm -hmm. you know, between them and I. Yeah. Why, why I haven't reached out? Why haven't you, you yourself reached right. out to me? You because know we forget you know. that the phone works both okay. ways. Hello, somebody. <laughs> yeah. So uh, <laughs> <laughs> this is church. I feel this Come is church. Come on now. I know. So, so we had to make sure, I had to make sure that when we're talking friend to friend, you know, whomever, that I say exactly what's going on with me. But I also ask them, what can we do better together as mm. friends to make this work? Absolutely. You know? Yeah. Absolutely. I love that. Oh, my goodness. Oh, I had to ask you that one because you know that. Are you going through it? Can we do we need to talk Ooh, about you? What is going I'm on, Lex? Okay, let on. me turn. Let me get, give me this. These. Yes, these go cards. Ahead and take them, okay. Oh, no. Okay, no. I don't want to ask that. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to have to set that up. Yes. I'm like, Ooh, okay. But yes. <laughs> Let's get into um, these cheesecakes. Okay, what do you have here for me? All right, so what I brought for you is a I kind of diverse things and and then brought a flavor of 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 each thing. Okay. So right there, you have my favorite cheesecake with my mom, which is the lemon poppy seed cheesecake with lemon curd and lemon cake on top and mm. at and at the bottom. So that is my favorite cheesecake of all time so I, I can't have favorites because that would say you have a bunch of kids and you're, and you're just like one yeah right? you can't do that no so <laughs> but this one is sentimental because my mom just love it and it kind of reminds mm -hmm. me of my Haitian Haitian cakes you know mm -hmm. <laughs> Haitian cakes are dense there's no fluffiness to it it's just Got a it. very dense heavy <laughs> cake and that's exactly what that is and then um I have our bread pudding all this right. is our bread pudding cheesecake that we make once a month. So we make different flavors. And this one, it's a vanilla uh, cheesecake bread pudding with vanilla pudding, caramel sauce, and, can and candy pecans. And then lastly, this is good, y'all. And then lastly, I have a cheesecake cupcake, uh, which is a classic raspberry cheesecake cupcake. And then our big seller, which is the jar of cheesecake. So we sell jars and slices and stuff. Now, you know we love that jar. Oh my God. That is like the most like unique thing, you know? Y'all wear me out. <laughs> okay, y'all wear me out. It, it looks very cute. The work that goes into a jar is no joke. But listen, how can you complain about the blessing that it is to have there you go. a community that supports your passion with your mom? You know, you can't beat that. Tell us what new do you have coming? I'm talking about new locations, more bread pudding. What are we doing? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So um, this month, so having gone to through depression and having, I'm, I'm, I'm not saying that depression is over, mm -hmm. but it's coming on the other side. I am very self-aware of what I've done, what I haven't done, and how and what I want to do. So uh, we have a new location that's opening really soon. Yay! 
yeah. and it's a different feel it's a different vibe and the whole business has been about my mom mm -hmm. but that location it's finally about Val it's not just about Ooh. the mom and the recipe it's more it's a different vibe with a little market space in front and then we have a commercial kitchen in the back which we'll use to support other bakeries other businesses in this town because I do want to pay it forward because when I started all right mm -hmm. <laughs> when I started downstairs opening Bell Coffee was selling my cheesecake you know and they gave me a chance to sell my cheesecakes and for years and so there are several business owners in this town that don't have a commercial kitchen mm -hmm. that need a commercial kitchen so they'll be able to use that kitchen space because you do pop-ups and you allow people to come and mm -hmm. and cook and mm -hmm. sell their their product yes yes so i am mm -hmm. i am a big supporter of business to business because i think if i support mm -hmm. others i think we all do better when we act like that and help each other yes. like that Yes. So that's what's going on in terms of that shop. We are also changing. There's a big movement in the country right now to mm -hmm. go to a four day work week. And so I know. Now you know I'm <laughs> I know some people are going to have right issues here. with that. I know you're going <laughs> to. <laughs> so we are changing the model. We want to change what it is to be a bakery, mm -hmm. you know, what it is to provide services because COVID and these past two years have changed the service industry forever totally. i don't think the service industry is going to be the same agree and uh people are thinking the the team members the staff that you need at a bakery at a restaurant yep. you people are still experiencing i am i am still experiencing that right now we can't find bakers mm. we are on all of the platforms mm -hmm, mm -hmm. we offer pay rate out the wazoo you got know it. we got great benefits but the world has changed. It's a different story. So mm -hmm. we want to change with the times. Got we, it. we don't want to keep doing the same type of hours. We want to provide mm -hmm. our cheesecake, but in a different format. Mm -hmm. So there's going to be during this month, there is going to be a whole rollout of what it is to be a bakery. Mm. And it's going to be like every every time we open every week, it's mm -hmm. going to be like a show because it's going to be like a pop up. It. So okay. I'm going to be running my business like it's a pop-up every single week because mm -hmm. that's how I started. I started at the Dallas Farmer's Market doing pop-ups. Got it. So this is what it's going to be like. Oh, this is awesome. You mentioned your team and how the service industry has changed. What does your team mean to you? So I think I think if if they do see this, you know, I am very – I am not the typical bakery owner or – I don't know, but I am Val. <laughs> right. You know, and I operate differently and I want people to have time cuz me at my jobs at the at the 9 to 5 jobs that I've had, mm -hmm. I've never had flexibility. Mm. I've never had the 4-day work week. Yeah. I've never had a lot of benefits of work-life balance mm -hmm. that um that a person should have. So there are things that we do at Val Cheesecakes. There are flexibility mm -hmm. options that we provide at Val Cheesecakes that that it's because of the great team that I have. I have people that have been with me for four years. Wow. You know, a big shout out to Will, TJ. Hey. Um, <laughs> we have two <laughs> ladies that are working with us, Shara and Chloe, that have been working with us for a long time. We have Tiffany as well. Yes. So all these people, they come every day to your passion. Mm. You know, mm -hmm. they come to your business yeah. to help you tell your stories. Yes. Now, they are getting paid, yes, but... They don't have to choose to work there. Correct. They come every day to come and help you tell your story. And you mean to tell me you're not going to try to make sure that you provide as much as possible mm -hmm. to the team member, the space, the environment, mm -hmm. the uh, support. So I'm a big, well, re really life to life balance because Trevor Noah recently quit his job. Mm -hmm. He's quitting mm -hmm. his job. Uh -huh. And he said, work life balance, that statement right there makes you think that your work is not your life. So it should always be life, life, life balance, really. It's not life, work, life balance. Life, life your balance. work should be your life too. You know, so, I love that. so that's what they mean to me. And I'm going to continue to support my team members. Yes. And I'm never going to be that owner that is tyrannic, that is running, like that's telling you this is how it should be. This is how yeah. it's going to be done. 
I am open to criticism, mm-hmm. and they criticize me, y'all. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> okay. You need people to be honest with yes, you. Yes, they, they let me know, like, this is not going to work. Okay, this cheesecake you want to do, this is not going to fly. These hours that you want to Im- implement, mm-hmm. no, nah, that's not going to cut it. So, I know that's so right. we do appreciate that. I love that. And one last question for you. What do you, peop- what do you hope that people get our customers get when they walk into Val's Cheesecake, especially this new location that's going to be more based around you instead of your mom? So when they walk into that space, it's not just going to be about the cheesecake because I know the cheesecake is about my mom. And a big secret, yes, <laughs> a uh-oh. big secret <laughs> is that the cheesecake is my mom's favorite dessert. And I love that. But Val has other dessert that he likes himself. I like a good sweet potato pie, y'all. Ooh. Okay, I'm born and raised in Haiti, but trust me, a sweet potato <laughs> pie is like my thing. Yes. So we're gonna have some other options there. Mm-hmm. We're gonna have this lemon curd that's on top of this lemon. There are mm. people who walk into our shop and say, I just wanna buy the lemon curd. Yeah. I just wanna buy that vanilla pudding you make. So we're gonna sell the toppings mm-hmm. that you see that you can use at, at your own bakery or you can use at, at if you're having an event. Mm-hmm. We're also having baking classes there. Oh, now that would be neat. Baking classes and we're also having meetups for small business owners and you can actually rent the kitchen, rent the whole store wow. for it to be your pop-up store. Wow. So it's more of a giving back to the community and that's exactly what I want the customer who walks in. Okay. This is a community place. This is something that's helping others, and that's the story that I want to stick to. I love that. Now, when you open this new location, we have to do this again. Yes. Old location. Yes. (laughs) Yes. And I'm going to need you sitting right next to me and tell these people that our story is not just about a cheesecake. Mm -hmm. It's more about a community effort. Yes. Let's do it. Let's do it. I'm ready. (laughs) All right. Are we going to eat these cheesecakes? We're going to eat these. Okay. Let's let's get some forks. All right. I might not eat because I've been eating them for 12 years, y'all. Okay, fine. (laughs) Okay, fine. I'm going to eat them. All right. All right. Sounds good. (laughs) Yay. Thank you, Val, so much. Thank you for joining me. I really appreciate it. Remember, again, we are here at Cosign Loft. I'm Lex in a Box. Val, go ahead and tell them how they can find you. Me, you can find us on Greenville Avenue, and that's on Greenville 2820 Greenville Avenue from 11 to 8. And we're also going to open our location on Accord, 1112 South Accord Street. So y'all can put it in the Google map or whatever and find it. But this is where you can find us. And then most most importantly, follow us on Val's Cheesecake, at Val's Cheesecake on IG. I am trying to get to the TikTok Please work with me, patience, okay? I'm no spring chicken. I can't get into TikTok yet. Hey, you got it. You're going to work it out. Okay. okay? Man, I better. <laughs> <laughs> you going to work it out, all right? Hey, y'all, it's little Lex in a box. Stay tuned.